The Tumakin Shadow has quickly become one of RuneScape's most overpowered weapons with the special effect of the staff being that it triples both your magic attack and magic damage percentage, making it the most accurate and hardest hitting staff in the game. It even comes with its own built-in spell which isn't even that expensive and comes at a cheaper cast rate than even the Sanguinesti. Let's use the staff at various bosses for 24 hours and see just how big of a punch this thing's got. Welcome to fall, the season of pumpkin spice and making sure your balls look nice. This video is sponsored by Manscaped and I am here to talk to you about the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. It will come with everything you need when it comes to manly grooming. The Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, and my favorite, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Toner. The Lawn Mower is the perfect trimming tool for getting those really sensitive areas thanks to their advanced skin safe technology, and it's even completely waterproof, so yes, you can use it in the shower. The nose and ear trimmer are perfect for those last second trims if you notice they're getting a little long, you simply don't want to be that guy with the long nose and ear hair. And now for the ball deodorant and crop reviver toner. Seriously, apply some of the deodorant on followed by a spritz of the toner and you'll be shocked at how long you'll be smelling fresh. So please, start the season off right and you can join up to 6 million men who also trust Manscaped. You can go to manscaped.com or click the link in the description and use the code RARG at checkout and you can get up to 20% off and free international shipping. 20% off for girlfriend approved balls, just as much as a gift to her as it is yourself. So use that code RARG and smell fresh. Little disclaimer, just like I did in the Fang video, I'm gonna be trying to focus on several monsters and bosses in this video rather than just one boss that I think is gonna make me the most money. So it's not about how much money could I possibly make, it's how much money can we make over the course of many bosses and experimenting and killing many things and testing how many kills per hour we can get and everything. So we're gonna have some fun with this weapon for 24 hours, but that does keep out things like TOA. TOA, this staff is of course amazing there, but the only problem is that it involves a lot of gear switches and then it wouldn't be staff only, would it? So staff only, baby. And let's kick it off strong with everyone's favorite boss, Zolra. It feels awesome doing another 24 hour video. I'm really excited for this one. Guys, we are going with an incredibly, incredibly simple inventory. Let's also, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but we have the imbued heart, of course. We have a super defense just because I figured why not, you know, I, I, I you know, I had the space. Anti-Venom and some super stores and food and that is going to be literally it. Now, with a plus 400 magic attack bonus, I could tell you this thing's gonna hit. And I, I have tried a few test runs here. Um, I did kind of pre-test all the bosses that I'm going to do in this video. And let me just tell you, especially the melee phase. This phase can be a little tricky to hit with magic. Not with 400 plus um, magic attack bonus. Now, I'm not the full like 480 something because I do have the Ring of Suffering. I actually thought about going for a ring switch. But if you're doing staff only Zora, you're doing it to be chill. Now, this guy does have much higher magic defense than all the other forms, and we're, we're even hitting that a little bit. We're only doing staff, no switches, no anything. That's a max hit. So you can only max a 50 at Zora. Um, quite annoying, because the max of the staff is obviously like, like a, I think maybe low 70s or something. Another 50! Whoo! That's awesome. Already the kill, and I have to overeat already to pick up this stuff. Now, that fight duration, guys. Um, let's just say I'm used to doing only Tebow, so like Tebow only Zora, and my personal best I think was 116. And with doing 10-ish test kills, I already got it down to 53 seconds. So I think it's safe to say that the staff is going to be better, at least when comparing Tebow only to staff only. I didn't even drink my super defense. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just so accurate. That's the thing. It's just so a Look at it. The fact that you can't hit over a 50 bothers me because that can that 53 seconds should really be like 41, you know? But hey, hey, it is what it is. Dude, look at these hits. It's it's actually dumb. This is actually stupid. This is the only tricky phase. If I uh, I guess not. 
maybe, maybe I take that back. I think if I was going for absolute max speed, you know, I'd probably have thralls. I'd probably have a Tebow switch just for the mage phase. That might be a new PB. That might be a new PB. Oh, ho, 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 yes. Oh, only nine kills in. I'm telling you guys, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. This staff is fucking ridiculous. Oh, yeah, it shouts it out. Hey, speedy boy. Dude, that's wild. 52 seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, 18 kills in. We get the tan fang. Iron men everywhere hate me. What can I say? 1,600 kills nearly. I don't have many tan fangs to my name, so I will gladly take it. We just passed the one hour mark, and that is my 28th kill. 28 kills in an hour. I've heard you can get up where to like high 30s, like 38 kills. I gotta be honest, with just the staff, I don't think that's too possible. It's just way too inaccurate on that magic phase. But compared to a Tebow, I am sticking by my gut and saying that this is definitely faster. If you did want to do a switch and be a little bit more sweaty, you could probably get like 35 kills an hour. I'm, I'm gonna lock that in and say that's probably fairly certain. Oh, and I forgot to mention, after the first hour, our loot tracker is already at 6.64 mil. I mean, I know I got the fang, but still, that is... <laughs> it's much higher than I was expecting. I'm gonna say that phrase a lot in this in this episode. I, I have a feeling. Whoa! Don't know if I want to see that. I mean, that's pretty cool. I haven't gotten one of those in a while, at least on my main account. Got one on my other account not too long ago, but... It's been a while since I've seen one of those. They look really cool on the ground. I'm gonna make this my last kill and we don't get anything. 113 kills in four hours. That comes out to just over 28 kills, 28.25 kills. And we have 15.1 mil on the price checker. Let's add up everything, see how much we spent and see how much GP per hour we made. Now, when it comes to getting drops, it's about 1 in 128 to get any of the rare items, both Fangs, the Serpentine Helm, and the Onyx. And we did get one. So I would say this is pretty on par for drop rate. As far as four hours goes, I'd say this is probably what you'd expect. One unique and a bunch of other loot. So we almost used up to 3k casts. I did start with 4,000 in my staff. They're around 700 each. So the staff alone costs about 2.7 mil. About 1 mil in other supplies. 3.7 mil in supplies used. All said and done. 15.1 mil on the price checker. Minus 3.7, 11.4 mil, divide that by four, and we get 2.85 mil per hour. Now it's Zora. Totally expected to make some decent money. I'll be honest though, I know Zora isn't as good as it used to be, but 2.85 mil an hour, I don't think anyone could complain about that. That's, that's an awesome amount of money. And again, 28 kills per hour with the staff, definitely faster than anything I've ever used. Now you can increase that pretty quick, if you swap out for even something as cheap as a blowpipe on the magic phase. So definitely do that if you're going for kills per hour. If you want something really nice and chill, just staff the whole thing. Next up, we are going to try Bandos. This staff works incredibly well at every single God Wars dungeon boss. And Bandos is just the one that I am most familiar with. So that is what we are going to start off with. I have my Zami item. I have my Bandos item. And we are going to use a whip in order to get the KC and also maybe kill the Major assuming I'm full HP, because I will be using Blood Barrage to heal. However, I've never mage Bandos, and I never ranged Bandos, aside from the one test trip that I did before the filming of this video. So bear with me. My inventory just feels so naked not having any pots. Stat boosting pots, to be more specific, because we do have super restores. It just feels so empty in here seeing this inventory. I do like the simplistic nature of it, though not bringing guthans and stuff. I guess having blood barrage is a little bit more intricate, but the thing is we're already maging. It's not like we're bringing a mage switch to use blood barrage. Mage is the main hand for heals and DPS. Okay, guys, we're ready. We're gonna invigorate. Ooh, probably should've set my quick prayers first. Definitely range protect. He's by the door. Oh man, I didn't really think this through. Caught the instant freeze. We're gonna freeze strong stack as well. And then we just mage. Ooh, starting off with a zero. Not too hot. This thing should still be pretty accurate. And there we go. There are the hits that I want to see. It's situations like that. Yeah, I got to get better at squeezing those corners. He's a pretty fat guy, so you can't run through him too easily. Caught the second freeze pretty easily. 
I'll definitely keep freezing this guy as well. We're not taking any damage, really, which is actually amazing. Because even if you fuck up the kills a little bit, as long as you have over the 60-something HP and pray that these guys don't stack you out in the process... I feel like dying is a lot less frequent than it would be if you were meleeing. Didn't have to eat once. That theoretically should be how every single kill goes. And I had to overeat to pick up the stuff. So I don't really know where to stand for the best spot, to be honest. I think I'll just try over here. Oh, three freezes in a row without missing a dang one. That just feels so good. I feel like I never want to melee bandos again. This is just too easy. I'm going to eat those words and die. And then I'll get the ranger and the melee next to each other to heal up. I don't know if there's a way to stack all three of them up together. It's kind of annoying because I wish I can just kill them all at once, obviously. There, there, there might be a way that I'll try to look into. But for now, I'll stick with this way. Oh, I could definitely just use Blood Blitz when I'm attacking Steel Wheel because it's so much cheaper. Look, I'm not even using Augury right now and I'm hitting every single time. I actually just decided to telly because I don't have any restores. So it's not a food problem. And I messed up a lot. He melee me a whole bunch. And that could definitely be improved. And I still had tons of food. I'm going to bring a ton of restores next trip. Look at the whole squad hanging out right there. I feel like chucking in just a fucking ice barrage. Let's do it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no, Grim Spike. I'm not in Grim Spike's range. I keep getting super restore drops, dude. I, I have like the worst inventory management right now. And I'm getting so flustered. I'm not used to having such a high supply of super restores. And I'm very low food, but I've been low food for a very long time. I've barely bones to peaches this entire time. This method is definitely a little overwhelming for anyone who's not super used to it. The last kill, I just got more super stores again. I just dropped three rune long swords because I'd rather have the longer trip, but I wanted to price check everything I got. So now it's really annoying because now my numbers at the end are going to be a little skewed, but I think you guys would rather the longer trips and more of a higher chance at a bando's item then to price check three rune long swords so whatever oh dude it's so op bro look at that i almost want to not even freeze strong stack and just try to get bandos down in in one freeze every time because it's just really accurate and i could probably do it like half the time if i don't freeze strong stack but he can hit a lot and look at the rune long swords i miss him already dude all right so i did just die and I made the mistake of picking up way too many restores and not focusing too much on food because most kills are really easy, but you get those occasional bad kills where you can't catch a freeze and you're not hitting and the minions are just on steroids. And I, I had no food after I ate my one shark that I had and I get comboed out. And then I actually get bandos down, but I can't actually heal off the minions quick enough and my prayer dropped and I died. 26 kills that trip though so even though i did die i don't think it's gonna waste too much time because i don't think that trip had too much time left in it anyway oh man and now the whole cc knows i'm here now <laughs> spoon i swear to god they're just like programmed to say certain things whenever somebody gets a drop i just realized i got the shard from grim spike and it's one in 1.5k i mean averaged all together it's like one in 500 to get any of the shards but that's pretty wild Wow, that's one long bone on the ground. I wonder where that came from. His leg, obviously, guys, you fucking weirdos. Holy sh- Whoa, look at this. It's gonna be 600k. See, let's get something good. Coins. Always coins. It's like one in four from this guy. And all the other God Wars dungeon bosses, too. These trips will just never end. I have all of these. I'm juggling three on the ground already. I'm like losing my mind here, guys. That is our 51st kill that trip. I'm not worried about getting HP back because that is the four hours up. 51 kills. We had 200 Bandos Essence before that last kill there. And that puts us at 51. And I could have kept going. That's the crazy part. I literally could have kept going. I think these results may shock everybody. Now, I think it goes without saying that I lost money, but I think where this method really shines is the kills per hour that you can get. So we got 94 kills in four hours, and if we divide that by four, that's 23.5 kills per hour. That was with a really scuffed first hour as well, that 10 kill trip, and I did die once. So figure that could probably easily become 25 or so. And I did telly from this trip as well, so you could definitely bump that number higher. 3.1 million loot. I am estimating that a little bit because I am including the minions because they do have drops that really add up over time. 3.7 mil in costs. 
and it's not even the staff that has the biggest cost factor there. That was only about 900k at 1.2k casts. It's pretty much all the ancients. All the ancient spells, 2.2 mil were spent on the barrages, the, the ice barrage and the blood barrage healing. Of course, the vast majority of that is in fact the blood barrage, but it allows you to get those massive kills per hour. I only lost 150k GP per hour for a total of 600k. Now, obviously, that is assuming you do not get an item. I wasn't that far off the drop rate of getting an item. If you want to include the boots in there as well, it should be about 1 in 127 to get any of the armor pieces if you average it all together. And the hilt was 1 in 512, so I don't know what that exactly comes out to be. So if you do get an item, you are going to make all that money back. And I mean, it's pretty much all profit. Any item you get is pretty much profit because 150k GP per hour spent doing this method really isn't too much. So that's one way to think about it. For comparison, melee solos with the Fang and an Elijah, I was getting 69 kills in a four hour period. So a massive increase. So over the course of the long run, this might be better money. I like it. Two thumbs up, even though we lost money. Next up, we're going to try one of my favorite places, which I know can be a little underwhelming in a video where you're trying to make a ton of money, but that is going to be Barrows. I feel like it'd be a little bit of a disservice if we didn't try Barrows because this should theoretically be the best weapon to bring here. Now, the incredible magic accuracy isn't really going to have much of an effect, but we can hit very high hits like that and potentially do a lot of two-shotting here. One thing I was very curious about is how accurate the magic staff with its crazy accuracy is going to be on a monster like Aram's because it should just hit right through. And I'm sorry, it's going to be a little bit of an eyesore because this guy walked right underneath me at the worst time. But um, it seems to literally be just as effective. Sorry, I know like I just said my name, but I'm kind of trying to, you know, <laughs> get max runs here. But hello, man, if you end up watching this video. And I'm not going to be going for anything higher than 66%. Oh, we're going to be seeing chests like that a lot. Um, of course, because I want max chests per hour. That's what I want to be mainly focusing on for sure. But obviously, that was a really, really quick, <laughs> really quick chest. So one of the things I'm realizing right off the bat is I'm definitely not two-shotting these guys as much as I would like to. I mean, this is actually a great example. Obviously, you're not always guaranteed to hit super high. But then you do, you know, you do get those fun surprises where you get like that nice two-shot, especially on Arams. When you two-shot Arams with magic, it just feels so right. Oh, a 62. Two shot it. That's a two shot. Just like that. I wasn't even praying for that two shot. Two two shots in one trip. Now we're cooking. Okay, so we are coming up on the one hour mark. And I gotta be honest, I am a little underwhelmed with, with the staff here. I only got 19 chests. No items. Uh, no items in the first hour. 19 chests in one hour of barrows. I'm gonna keep going because I know for a fact I can average over 20. It definitely is very possible. I know people can get 22 with the saying. It's really making me question that, though. I think to get those 22 chests per hour, you probably bring Barrows tabs and a full inventory of super restores and stamina potions so you don't go to your house at all. That would definitely speed it up. Um, and you probably bank like once an hour or so. Probably even less, to be honest. Um, yeah, I can't really see you banking much with that either. Unless you're banking all the Barrows items you're getting. 19 an hour? I was getting 18 an hour with the Fang. And that had really no input costs at all. I mean, this, I'm not using any super stores. I haven't even taken a dose. So the only expenses are the staff itself, which is cheaper than the Sang. So I guess that does have a little bonus there. And also the lockpicks, which honestly, over the course of four hours, aren't really going to amount to much at all. But again, a little underwhelming. I wasn't expecting this thing to get an extra like five per hour. You know, I, I know you can only kill these things so fast. But I was hoping I'd get like an extra one or two over what you'd expect with a saying. Like I was hoping I'd get around 22 chests an hour, I guess you could say, without doing that super sweaty, extra expensive method. But maybe it was a bad first hour. We're going to keep rolling through it and see if we can bring that average up to at least 20 per hour. But it definitely is very fun to use. It's very enjoyable seeing those big hits. Okay, this is chest 420. So obviously it has to be an item. I'm gonna get that good rush hit of dopamine in about one second. Oh, uh, I mean, for a non-Barrows item chest, I guess that's okay. How do I not get a hit of dopamine at 420? 
It was a perfect build-up. Oh my god, a Varix flail. <laughs> it's so cheap. I'm just happy to get an item. That's not gonna be much money at all. 174k. So we're just over the three-hour mark, and we are at 19.33 average chests per hour for a total of 58, and we still only have the Varix flail to our name. I cannot believe it. Um, for reference, it's about 1 in 17 for a Barrow's item, and we're averaging 1 in 58 right now, so I'm scared I'm gonna lose money again, just like at Bandos. Could you imagine? Could you actually imagine? I'd cry. You have to, like, really try hard to lose money at Barrow's. <laughs> oh, no. Chest number 69 is gonna have what we're looking for. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Chest number 69? Really? Actually got something else. 285k yes so we just passed the four hour mark tanked a big hit there this means this is the last chest at barrows mm, and we don't get anything what a really horrible four hours of barrows i feel so let down not even really because of the staff anymore it's just two items and 77 chests 2.85 mil on the loot tracker and that comes out to 19.25 chests in an hour. So we didn't hit that 20. 2.85 mil on the loot tracker. 1.3 mil in expenses. 1.9 thousand casts used for 1520k. 1.5 million GP was made in pure profit over the course of that four hour time period. So in total, 380k per hour was made. Obviously barrows only over four hours the variance there can be massive so 380k you could definitely make more than that i got incredibly unlucky with the amount of items and both of these are very cheap items the staff here is amazing obviously i would never buy the staff just to go to barrows i think that goes without saying there are many efficient ways to do barrows but the shadow worked great here just very underwhelming with all the loot Let's fire to the next boss because that is very underwhelming. Next up, I want to do four hours of Armadil. However, after a lot of thinking about it, deciding to not use the staff to get KC just because I know it would be a lot slower than if I just came here in the Wildy with a blowpipe to get the keys myself. I know I'm not going to be using the staff to get the KC, but I'm obviously going to use it for Armadil. I still want to remain somewhat efficient, and I was actually going to bring the staff here in the Wildy, and I still know I can put on the whole PK skull prevention thing, but I didn't want to risk it. So this is going to be the only indication of not using a staff in this video. Just wanted to say that, but it is going to be the most efficient still. Three keys in 17 minutes. That went really, really fast. Much faster than any Armadil KC I could get, so that's brilliant. You know, it's a little funny. I'm actually kind of nervous to do Armadil because I'm scared I'm going to mess it up. And if I do mess it up, all that means is that I am eating into my kills per hour that I could possibly get here. So um, we can drop this now. I think the process is going to be very similar to Bandos, except I'm not going to have to run around the room. I attack Bandos, protect from range on, and heal off the minions. Simple as that. Freeze the melee Oh gosh, found a world way too quick for my liking. You know, I'm not I'm not mentally prepared yet. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. There he is. Come on, Kriara. Give me something juicy. Don't pull a bandos. Okay, so this is obviously the melee. -er. Okay, we did hit the well, we hit a zero, but we hit the freeze. Have we not have we like not hit yet? Oh no, what's wrong? What is wrong? What am I doing wrong? What? I'm getting destroyed. I'm getting destroyed. Oh my gosh, I am taking so much damage. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'll be honest. So now it should just be the major hitting me. I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. Is protect from range not the correct thing to pray here? Oh man, we gotta use these bones to peaches ASAP. <laughs> oh god, it's a good thing we brought him. Oh boy, I am eating way too much, guys. Oh, I was even brewed down a little bit. Shit, shit, shit. Oh my god, you're actually shitting me. This is such a bad trip. I'm, I'm gonna grab that before I fucking die. Dude, what? 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 I'm stewed. I'm doing something wrong, but I, I am getting the kills fast, but I am also getting destroyed here. Look, I was looking at a guy. The time's still going down. I'm so flustered, bro. Caught fucking watching a guy mid-arma kill getting an arma chest plate. I cannot believe it. 
Out of prayer, I'm a mess. I'm a mess. I should stop bossing. <laughs> Okay, we're just gonna telly. We're gonna telly. We're gonna telly. I'm doing something wrong. Obviously. Obviously, something isn't going right with that trip. Don't know how I managed to pull that bad boy. That is that is weird. That is wild and wacky. I imported some tile markers. Although the first kill, they're all gonna be out of position. So I'm just gonna YOLO the first kill. And then try this new method that I've discovered. Okay, so we gotta start here. That's the safe spot after I freeze them. The minions, that is. So then I can walk underneath them because one spawns right there. So I get two shadow hits. I should freeze. Walk underneath. I'm still getting hit so bad. Now, theoretically, the only thing that should hit me is his magic attack. And that's it. I'm getting hit like crazy, though. Is that the magic attack? I don't know. Oh, I don't know what I did wrong. No, 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 no. I think I was going okay at first. I went somewhere wrong along the way. This is going to be a learning armor with staff for four hours, I think. Please tell me that what I see on the ground in the corner of my screen is not a curved bone sitting right next to the emeralds. It is, isn't it? It's definitely a curved bone. It's a curved bone. It's a curved bone. This should totally go without saying. But I do think that you should be on task every time you kill Kree. It just makes the process that much easier. Now, I'm definitely not the best at killing Kree. And what I like to do is freeze Kree first, then freeze the melee minion. Because Kree has this weird ability where when you actually click off of Kree and your character isn't focused on Kree, she will just rush at you with melee. I don't really know why the mechanic is the way it is. Oh god. See, it's just, it's not good. It's not good. This trip is actually going pretty good, all things considered, though. Ah, uh, we had to just tell you out, but that trip was our best by far with 13 kills, which I know there's a ton of room for improvement. There is a ton of room for improvement there, but I think we can only go up from here. It's better than my first four kill and then my five kill trip. So that 13, big improvement, and I'm excited to head back there. I do need to grab more keys, so we're going to get three more and then head back there. So I decided to get four because it was really quick. And I figured it would last me the remainder of the total four hours I want to do. And we got a pair of dragon boots. So guys, I have a confession to make. A few kills ago, we actually pulled a decent drop. Let me scroll up. And Armadillo Hill, kill count 93. It was actually the 30th kill in this four hour test. And I actually missed it because I hit my streaming button to go live by mistake instead of the record button. Now, I didn't actually go live. It gave me like a little warning and whatnot. So I didn't actually go live, but it's why I missed the initial reaction. That was on kill 30. Uh, for reference, that was just kill 35. And I spent the last five kills trying not to die and also sort out my recorder. And we're out of food. We do have some prayer. We're going to try our best to uh, get a, get our heals off these guys and use bones to peaches. But that is our second drop. Big apologies for missing the initial reaction. Um, good news, the recorder is back up. So what happened was I got the recorder back up, but the timer wasn't in the bottom right of the screen. I mean, you can actually see it's not cropped properly. That's how quick I had to throw it up. Ooh, almost just died there. This is my last kill. I'm not even going to bother doing the minions because I can't fit in any more. Oh, that's the wrong telly. I, I thought my imbued heart was a telly for a sec. I panicked. I am so done with the four hours there. I got to be honest, really didn't enjoy it too much. And I got spoiled with drops. So it's kind of weird saying that. Um, staff does amazing DPS. Again, this is all off task. So it still hits really good. I'm just not a big fan of having such a low magic defense compared to when you range. And if you miss the melee freeze, he's pretty much always guaranteed to hit you. It's pretty stressful, especially for someone who doesn't know Armadillo too well. But let's see how much we made. I am just... I, I don't think you guys realize how relieved I am to finally be done with Armadil. So in this four-hour novice test with the staff at Armadil, we managed to get 64 kills. That includes also getting the ecumenical keys. That can definitely be increased if you are a bit more experienced and you are on task. Keep that in mind. Again, I would never really kill Armadil off task, but I really want to show the staff and I did not have a task and I do not have the points to skip for a task. In those 64 kills, we did get lucky and we did get two drops. Not including the drops, we had one mil in loot. I'm also adding in the minion loot on top of this. And that comes at a loss of actually 750k an hour because we spend one mil an hour in supplies. Four mil were spent in supplies 
1.3 mil in inventory, 1.9 mil in runes, and 800k in casts. That's exactly 1 mil an hour spent. So if we make a mil, 250k an hour, that's 750k loss. Now, Bandos was only a 150k loss, but the main difference there is I got a lot more Bandos kills, and I think I was a lot more reliant on using spells to heal, where at Bandos, I, of course, was reliant on it, but I wasn't stressing at the end of every single kill to get my HP back up because you didn't need to do it every single time you killed Bandos. With the big meaty drops, 46 mil in loot, so we did get a little spoon fed. That probably makes up for going 94 kills dry at Bandos. Definitely a very expensive item with the Arminal chest plate here. So with that, 46 mil. If we take 46 minus 4, 42 divided by 4, 10.5 mil an hour. But in my humble opinion, especially in paper thin gear with only 108 magic defense, I did not really enjoy Armadil. I got spoon fed and I still really didn't enjoy Armadil. But if you have the staff, it's worth giving it a go. You can make some really awesome money. The next boss on the agenda is going to be the Giant Mole. I know, I know, not too exciting. I love this boss and I can't get enough. But originally, I wasn't actually going to kill the Giant Mole. Let's see if this world is free first real quick. And it is, how hype is that? I wasn't going to kill the Giant Mole because I thought to myself, the Giant Mole has really high defense. And then I remembered. The whole point of this staff is to kill things with incredible magic defense because of how messed up accurate it is. And there's also another selling point to the staff that I didn't realize that I just looked up. When you splash with magic, it doesn't count as a hit. Now, everyone here is familiar with the mole. If it's under half HP like it is now, and I splash, which hopefully I don't do much splashing at all, that wasn't a splash, but... If you splash under half HP, he can't dig. That is not true for anything else. If you hit a zero with Darok, the Twisted Bow, the Fang, anything, he can definitely dig. But when you splash, it does not register as a hit, and he will not dig. Now, this theoretically could mean that even if I get less DPS by a little bit, look at that splash, does not dig. Oh, that was a zero. That was a zero hit. That's different. He could have dug on that one. If I hit a zero, he could dig. If I splash like that, he can't. I want to clarify the difference. One's a miss, one's a hit. I just hit a zero. But I could theoretically get less DPS per hour and still more kills per hour. And that was my second zero hit. He didn't dig, but I'm trying to prove a point, Mole. Thank you for not digging anyway. But yeah, we're going to see how well this works. I'm really excited. You guys know I'm a mole fanatic. And I could already tell you it's seemingly better than a twisted bow. I'm only two kills in. I can't get ahead of myself. Another splash, no dig. And that's why I'm also not bringing a cannon. Because I want to see, even through the splashes like that, if I can get faster kills just by not running around as much. Because it is possible I can get faster kills without a cannon if I can get kills like that and just hang out here and attack it as soon as it spawns. Because of course, if I'm not running around and less spanking too, because I don't have to bring as much stamina potions or anything. And that was a horrible safe spot, but we'll see. And I haven't been splashing much. So that's also good news. I mean, you hit a lot of zeros with a twisted bow as well. So we are allowed some zeros here. And the reason why I keep comparing it to a twisted bow, by the way, is they have very similar max hits. So it's probably the most comparable weapon that I can think of. They're both very high tier, both very expensive. So it's like, oh, you're going on the mole grind. Which one would you want to buy? Which one's the better weapon for the mole? And I don't know the answer to that question yet, but we will find out. Of course, as you guys know, this is 700 GP a cast. The price of a twisted bow, if you're using dragon arrows, I get you don't have to use dragon arrows, but I could tell you right now, this is probably better than a twisted bow and not using dragon arrows for sure. I mean, look at this. So dragon arrows are fucked up expensive. They're 2.7K right now. So you can't even throw in the argument of this is more money. Plus the mole, you make a lot of money. What? I got the pet again! Oh my God. Oh my God, no. No, <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm not praying. I'm not praying. I'm not praying. I already have the mole pet. If you guys have been away from the channel for a very long time, it took like 10.7K KC. I just got a second roll of the mo the mole pet. I can't even talk. Are you shitting me? 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 Moo? I meant to say no. That's really awkward. Oh, God. No! 
So we're just past the one hour mark. I would say I probably got 79 kills. I squeeze in an extra kill there because um, we're a minute past that hour mark. So 79 kills an hour. It's very on par with both the Fang and the Twisted Bow. I would say this is the slowest of the three, but I would say they're also so marginally close to each other that unless you had like 30 hours of testing each, you're not going to have any exact results because, you know, an hour here and there can fluctuate. Even a four hour test, you have one eh, hour and that could throw off your kills per hour by like two. And yeah, so I would say this is probably the worst one of those three that I've tested, but I haven't ever tested the Twisted Bow with Missouri. So I'll be honest, I don't know how many kills per hour that kind of beefs up your kills, but that's why I'm assuming the Twisted Bow is a little better. I'm assuming the Fang and that are pretty on par. And then this is slightly behind with like 79, 80 kills an hour. Now, I haven't used the cannon yet. I'm really, really enjoying the non-cannon method. I've only used two stamina pots and I have two left. I started with four. And I, I'm just barely using any super swords either because I'm not even protecting from melee half the time because I'm safe spotting. And then when I attack it like this, a lot of times I don't even put it on. So I'm using a lot more cost compared to like a melee method in terms of my casting. But my inventory setup is a lot cheaper. I don't have any super combats. I'm using like one third the stamina is probably even more than that and I'm using like half the super restore. So keep that in mind with your calculations. I'll give you guys the full breakdown of this setup, but in my Fang video, I also go in depth about four hours of the Fang here. So you can compare those side by side to get a nice accurate representation of how much each, each costs per hour. Cause the kills are gonna be very similar. This guy has no idea. You take that back, mister. Take that back. Take that back. I have more mole KC than you'll ever fucking see in your life. Fucking who the hell does he think he is over there, you piece of sh- So we just finished three hours of the mole. The last hour again, I'm gonna be using the cannon, but we got 238 kills. So we actually are 79.33 kills per hour. Let's gear up quick. So we actually increased it by a little bit. Pretty, pretty hype, pretty hype, I know. So we're about to wrap up this hour. We're gonna get this one last kill and I am on the very end of supplies on this trip. So it's actually all turning out just perfectly here. We can actually take that off. So after this kill, I'm actually gonna pick up the cannon because we are gonna fly out right after this kill. After we get this kill, that's gonna be my 77th kill in this hour. So it's actually two kills slower on average. I feel like those first three hours, like right on the dot it felt like it's 79 kills 79 kills now i will say this guy digs a lot and i think because the staff is a little bit more inaccurate if i had to guess compared to the twisted bow on top of the fact that the cannon is just hitting it like crazy it pretty much gives the cannon more rotations around and he's not digging when you're splashing with the staff so i think just those extra cannon hits really make him dig i went through like three times the amount of stamina pots than i normally would um, so I would say the staff works really great by itself there, but not with the cannon, but the Fang and the T-Bow are just going to be better overall. Let me start off by saying that I don't recommend bringing the staff here. It definitely contends as some of the best kills per hour that you can get at the mole, but the Fang and the Twisted Bow are super comparable, if not better, arguably faster and cheaper to use. So unless you have to use the staff for a very specific reason, like you're an Iron Man, somehow have all the runes and don't care about using those runes, then I would say, yeah, this is a great thing to use. I would say it's definitely more chill than the T-Bow. So if you're a main, don't want to use a cannon and just want to run as little as possible, that's when you'd use the staff because I would say it makes the mold dig a lot less often. Maybe there's even some super meta out there where you claw spec him in the beginning, you twisted bow him and then finish him off with the staff so he doesn't dig as much. There's probably some crazy meta out there that you can get like 90 kills an hour. So we could definitely try that out if you're interested. But in those four hours, we managed to get 315 kills. The loot tracker says 314. I guess it didn't count one, but 7.76 mil was made in drops in that time period in the four hours. 2 mil in staff costs, 2.9k casts, 700k in supplies in the inventory were used, 2.7 mil total costs, and that leaves us with a 5 mil profit for a total GP per hour of 1.25 mil. So, take it as you will, guys. Again, it's very comparable to the other methods. It's just that this is probably going to be a little bit more pricey, so keep that in mind. The next boss that we're going to tackle is none other than another God Wars dungeon boss, Saradomen. 
Commander Ziliana. I've heard the staff works pretty great there, and I want to give it a try. So for the last four hours, that's exactly what we are going to be doing. But just like we did for Armadil, we are going to get our keys in here. Not using the staff, don't want to risk it, and the blowpipe is much faster. So it's just the more efficient way to do it. But of course, to kill Sarah, we are going to be using the shadow. Already got a key. Okay, we're going to shoot for four. I don't think I'll need four. I think Sarah trips are going to be a lot more chill than at armadil so i'm gonna go for four though just in case i die or something just so i don't have the gear back to come back here 19 minutes we get four and some dragon boots i i know there's three in my inventory i had a bank to grab my avas because i forgot it but that is four and dragon boots look at that back to back dragon boots they're paying for the dragon darts i'm using before anybody makes a comment that i'm wasting money doing so i'm a little nervous to do this because it is incredibly rainy outside right now it is a torrential downpour that hurricane that just swept through florida is pretty much now making its way up the east coast i'm all the way up in jersey but um so not hurricane status but it is very very rainy so if i dc you'll be hearing from me because you don't need internet to record <laughs> so you will hear everything of my complaints if i dc but um i think we have enough run i don't know if i should need the stamina pause i'm gonna try freezing ziliana and the melier as i've done in every other god Wars dungeon room so far um it's gonna take me a sec to really figure this out but i'm assuming it's gonna be very similar to doing the tebow method so i do have some staminas if i need them but i'm hoping i don't have to rely on them this is going to be more of a test trip above all else oh they were just on top of each other if i could figure out how to get them on top of each other like that that'd be perfect probably should have set my quick prayers first definitely magic protect so the only thing that should damage us is the ranger i say that and i instantly splash oh god oh man crud come on come on come on don't do this to me guess it's not very accurate am i gonna have to be running around the room like the Tebow method? Would it be the worst thing in the world? I'm, I'm very used to that method. Come on, don't hit me, Ranger. I watched a video of someone do this, and he tanked a lot of the range hit, so I'm hoping I'll be in the same category here. We do have Blood Barrage to heal up. Coin drop, always, always coins, always coins from anything God or his dungeon related. Um, yep, so same principle. We're going to freeze these two. <gasps> Whoa. All right, Rark, be a little bit more careful. I was Really trying not to eat that first trip, but hey, if it's if, if it's one brew doser every kill, I'll take it. Anything's better than Armadil at this point. I hate that boss now. So I've kind of got an okay method down, I think. I start by attacking Ziliana. Ziliana starts to follow me, and I can kind of get these two to group up on top of each other. The one problem that I'm noticing is that... You don't always hit Ziliana. Okay, that time I hit it. So out of the three bosses I've done, though, in God Wars Dungeon, Ziliana, at least in the first few kills, has been noticeably harder to freeze than the other two. So that's the one problem. This is like a perfect, perfect run. This showcases the perfect power of the staff and an incredibly smooth kill. It's actually my smoothest kill yet. So you guys got to experience that with me. I thought that was just me who got the pet. Oh my god. Okay, guys, I have a little bit of a confession to make. I died the first trip here, and I decided to bring my tour of a full helm just to make it a little easier on me. I know the whole point of the staff is it triples your magic damage percentage and it triples your accuracy, but I had five range defense in the other setup, and the entirety of the kill, literally the whole kill, Bree, which is the ranger, just hits you every single hit, and I did not pick up my loot there. Every single hit, Bree just completely one bangs you and to be honest even though i just hit two really big hits there in a row the staff here isn't incredibly accurate and i know you're probably thinking well then why would you make yourself even more inaccurate and again that's because since the kills aren't like the quickest in the world and some are don't get me wrong you can hit really high but since the kills aren't the quickest thing in the world it's not the easiest thing to get it down without taking a lot of damage so this is a little slower of kills, and as you can see, I've opted out of trying to even freeze him because, or her, sorry, freeze her, because it's just not the most accurate thing, and I miss a lot, and that's part of the reason why I died the first time. So I'm trying to figure out the best with the staff here. I honestly don't think the staff is worth using here, I'll say that now. I could tell you the Tebow is easier 
even if it's less DPS the Tebow, you take a lot less damage. It's a little bit more chill. Um, I know I'm out of stamina potions now, but I have some on the ground that I died with. If you ever die at any God Wars dungeon bosses and you're like, oh, I gotta get KC again, don't fret too hard because there's a little bank on the ground of all your stuff that you died with in terms of supplies and you could re-gear like that. And that's a God Sword Shard from Bree. Now this trip is actually going okay. I have a lot of food because I keep getting food through just, you know, the kills here and anytime I'm low, like right now, this is a great example. I just bones to peaches up, and even if I am still a bit low, I have all this leftover food. I've started to kind of resort back to trying to freeze, which hasn't been the best method. I just feel like if I'm not going to freeze, I would just always use a Tebow here instead. I feel like the selling point of using the staff here is having a little bit more of a chill experience by freezing. I'm loving the Torva Helm edition. I, I stick by that 100% if you're not changing prayers throughout the kill. Again, I know some people really like to do that. Not really my style. I'm not noticing a massive difference between freezes with the helm on and with the helm off. Sometimes you can still miss like four in a row, which is really annoying. Let's see how we do this kill right here. Let's see. Let's see. See, that happens a lot where you think you freeze her. See, four. Mm, there we go. Mm, it's just like, that's so many missed hits, you know? I fucking walked right into her! I was out of stams anyway. I was out of stams. That trip was over. I just minimized the timer. That's why it stopped. Ah! That trip wasn't ruined because of a death. That would have been my last kill. Out of stams. I risked it. One hour to go on the clock. And we haven't gotten anything good from Saradoman just yet. Oh, all grouped up. Look it, smile for the camera, guys. They fucking knew it. They fucking knew they wanted to make me look good for you guys in this clip. Hell yeah. Now make me look even better, and let's get an Armadale Crossbow next kill. 40 minutes, and we're gonna have to finish this trip. We are at 58 Commander Ziliana kills in total. Now, we do have a key in the bank still, so we can fire right back in here. So let's go grab it. This is gonna be the last kill. There's no way we can squeeze in another kill because the spawn is a minute and a half. Sapphire will we'll snag just because it's the last drop. We have a minute left. I didn't want to kill the minions. I'm sick of that place. Honestly, I will say, though, what I will say with a little bit of ranged defense and when you're smart about when you brew and whatnot to keep your imbued heart invigorated, I liked it a lot better than the first half here. I, I just stopped freezing. I mean, I freeze in emergencies if I felt like I had to, but for the most part, didn't freeze. Just ran around just like a Tebow. And I like that method so much better. It's the freezes you really cannot rely on. But that is 24 hours complete. Four hours done of Sarah. Unfortunately, no drops. So we definitely lost money at Sarah. So we managed to get 73 kills in that four hour time period for an average of 18.25 kills an hour. That can definitely be increased. I feel like if my first hour and a half wasn't incredibly scuffed trying to barrage half the time because you splash a lot i just don't think it's worth it i tried doing it with the torva helm on and without it on with max mage you definitely do not always hit and every splash you're not only probably taking more damage but you are also taking a lot longer to get the kill down and when you have the hat on that brie as i said really messes you up so if, if you're prayer flicking in between the kill Probably the meta, not the freezing part, but just not having any range defense. But for all you casual gamers out there, definitely recommend just having some range defense. I mean, you definitely hit enough with the staff, but I would definitely drop the barrage. Just treat it as you would a twisted bow. We spent 900k in supplies for the inventory costs, 900k in supplies for its staff charges, 2.4 mil in barrage runes, which as always for the God Wars dungeon methods with magic, they are the highest cost. In this four hour test, that's 4.2 mil spent in this four hour test. That's over a mil an hour. We did get 2.1 mil in loot back. I'm, as always, counting in the minion loot in this as well, which means we lost 2.1 mil as well. 525k spent per hour doing Sarah with the staff. Now, this should go without saying, but that is obviously assuming you do not get any sort of special drops. The two big ones being the Armadal Crossbow and the Saradoman Hilt. The Sarah Sword's kind of useless. It's really cheap. It's really, really cheap. But that is Sarah, and that is the conclusion of the 24 hours. So the total price checker is actually 76.9 mil, but it's been a few days, and there's been some price fluctuations, and I'll be honest, 
Not every single item is in here. Some got lost in my main tab that I already had duplicates of that I forgot to clear out. But 76.9 mil. Insane. So apparently the staff is actually higher than I bought it for, according to the GE tracker. That's what it's selling for. Oh, we made money. We made 10 mil. Wow, we made an extra 10 mil. I'm fucking I'm buzzing, dude. The whole time I'm like, I'm gonna lose 200 mil. I'm gonna lose 200 mil. Fucking made an extra 10 mil. Let's go.